What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG, and today we're going to jund them out with an experimental frenzy build you probably haven't seen anywhere else. So let's check it out. experimental frenzy you know not too long ago during preview season to my memory folks had jokes about this card there are a few people out there who are like i don't know donate it and commander that's hilarious but a few of us myself included to toot my own horn a little bit just sorry but to do that a few of us were like i don't know guys this card looks like card advantage to me um to us you know and it turns out score point for your boy a lot of people doing stuff with this card in standard nowadays there are mono red decks that are all but built around this as their entire late game plan to not run out of gas it turns out that works really well and there's even a green red dinosaurs list keep it on the low you guys that's been putting up w's in the mtgo competitive league results it's shown up a couple of times so a lot of people are experimenting with this card because it's just a great way to get card advantage in the late game instead of having to do weird stuff like play Karn when you really don't want to do that. So Experimental Frenzy is really getting around these days and today I'm going to show you why it might be the right idea to add green and black. But first a couple of quick like bullet points on Experimental Frenzy before we get into the other cards in the deck. First of all, just the three of. You don't have to play four copies because ironically, one of the worst things that can happen while you're frenzying is that you run into another copy of Experimental Frenzy. So you don't have to play the full playset or anything uh, because one copy is all you really need over the course of most games. There's also kind of a deck building concession one has to make when brewing around this card, and that's that you have to keep your curve relatively low. We are playing a couple of five drops in the deck, but that's as high as we go, because double spelling on Experimental Frenzy turns is really where we want to be. But now back to the question, why add green and black? Well, it turns out there's so many good reasons to add green and black that the deck is base Golgari at this point, and Experimental Frenzy and just one other card are the only main deck red cards. So. That said, why so many good reasons to add green and black? Well, I think there's a couple of specific cards and at least one specific strategy that make it so worth making this deck jun. So we'll start with why green? And I think one of the best reasons is Wayward Swordtooth. This card is so awesome in this deck because one of the worst things that can happen that just about ends your Experimental Frenzy turns is running into multiple lands. So if you can play extra lands in a turn, that's awesome. That extends your exper experiment turns, you know, your Frenzy turns. And it actually allows you to play more spells during your Frenzy turns because you're kind of ramping. So this thing's awesome. You know, with the Frenzy out, you'll eventually hit City's Blessing a lot faster than you otherwise would. You know, you're just playing permanent after permanent, uh, land after land. So you'll hit City's Blessing and turn on Wayward Swordtooth before too long, and that's awesome too. But do be careful, because if you play him on curve, you've effectively done nothing two turns in a row on critical turns in standard. You, know, you go turn three Swordtooth and turn four Frenzy, then that, you know, you didn't really do anything. <laughs> it kind of sucks. So again, be careful. But once you do have your Frenzy locked into place, it's great to play a Wayward Swordtooth and start getting extra lands. So I guess we could call this deck Wayward Experiment. That seems cool. Like, I'm looking for a good name for the deck, and there's a few. But anyway, let's move on. Why add black to the deck? There's a couple of reasons, but I think that the one single card that makes me want to add black to the deck is Doom Whisperer. So I'm playing a couple of copies of this. I mean, this is already a good enough card. Like, we're playing black, so Doom Whisperer. I mean, look at the stats on the stupid thing. But what I like about it specifically in this deck is that it allows us to just surveil away, like, bad stuff from the top of our library while we're trying to frenzy out. You know, it's a really good combo on curve with Experimental Frenzy because this allows us to just get rid of stuff that we don't want on top of our library. That's a great combo if we have the extra life to pull it off. So that's another good name for the deck, by the way. You could call it, like, Doom Frenzy, although that kind of sounds like a, like a backyard wrestling finishing move. But I guess that's apropos, considering that's usually exactly what Doom Whisperer is. Did I just say apropos just now? I'm sorry about that, you guys. But I think that the other reason to add green and black to the deck is probably the actual best reason to add green and black to the deck. And that's the fact that we could explore. And explore is really good with Experimental Frenzy because, again, we just get to blast through land pockets and not hit too many lands on a Frenzy turn. So with that in mind, let's just play the basic package here. We're going to play four copies of Merfolk Branch Walker, four copies of Seeker Squire, another good reason to add black, and four copies of Mama Luigi Jade Light Ranger. 
I'm sorry, Jade Light's up to like $15 now. I hope you got it when it was like $5 before rotation. Um, and it was still being played before rotation. But now it's just everywhere. There's a reason for that. This kind of value when it enters the battlefield is just great at the moment. And it's even better in this deck. You know, again, this allows us to blast through land pockets when we play it on Frenzy turns. That's exactly what we want. And obviously, Branch Walker and Secret Squire allow us to do that. Not only in the early game, you know, help us get to lands, help us get to, you know, fix our mana and stuff like that in this three color deck. Um, but also, once we do have Frenzy locked into place, it allows us to get through land pockets, and that's really important. It also, by the way, allows us to effectively surveil away, you know, we're, we're kind of surveilling one when we explore. It allows us to surveil away stuff that we couldn't cast on top of our library when we cast it too. So, for all kinds of reasons, these explore creatures are really playable just in standard at large right now, but they're even better along with Frenzy. Now, if we're going to play all those Explore guys, we're also going to play four copies of Wild Growth Walker, because this card is finally good. I mean, it was good all along. Hush, hush. Like, everyone knew this card was good all along, but it turns out that it's finally getting the due it's, that it's due, you know? Um, just Wild Growth Walker is crazy with 12 other Explore dudes in the deck, and another Explore card that we'll get to a little bit later. Um, but this is great on turn two. If you plan on going, you know, Jade Light next turn, that's just an unbelievable play. It keeps you in the game against the Monored Aggro decks. They're kind of a force in the format right now and other sort of aggro decks, you know, Mono White, Selesnia, stuff like that, Boros, whatever. Um, so that extra three, six, sometimes even nine life that this can easily generate you is just going to get you into the mid game where you want to be, help get your frenzy in place and really start casting a lot of cards. And by the time you're done frenzying, this is just the biggest creature on the board. You know, sometimes you'll be able to on frenzy turns, go like Merfolk branch walker into Jade Light Ranger. And suddenly you've gained all the life and you've got this huge walker. So again, Texas Ranger is just one of the better cards in the format right now already that's made even better by the presence of Frenzy because it allows us to just, you know, explore multiple times in a turn on turn six, seven, you know, when you'd usually be running out of gas by that point in the game, Frenzy gives us the ability to gain life all the way into the late game. But there's a couple of creatures left in the creature base because I had to play a full play set of Ravenous Chupacabra. They're just too good right now. Yeah, straight up card advantage in the mid to late game that's going to kill everything all the way up to like Lyra Dawnbringer, you know? We don't have too many indestructible creatures left in this format to worry about with all the Amonkhet gods gone and stuff. So I guess you've got to care about like Vinemare and Carnage Tyrant to an extent, Nullhide Ferox. There's a couple of things, but for the most part, this is just going to kill dead almost any creature. And on the off chance that they're using like Niv Mizzet or something, this kills it without generating them any sort of card advantage. So lots of reasons to play Ravenous Chupacabra right now. And it's even good at, even though it's four mana, it's even good on like frenzy turns, you know, especially if we have five, six mana, we can get Chupacabra and another spell in. And that kind of card advantage is just unbelievable in the standard. Or any standard, basically. But to finish out the creature base, we're going to play one copy of District Guide here. Yeah, this is kind of another Jade Light Ranger, sort of. But what this is specifically in the deck for is to get that red source for turn four. If we can get this on turn three, which won't happen every game, obviously. We're just playing the one copy. But if we do get it on turn three, it guarantees that we can frenzy on turn four. But keep in mind, I should point this out, you won't always frenzy on turn four. Sometimes you'll frenzy turn five, turn six. You want to get your walker down, get your explore triggers in, expand your board state, and then often experimental frenzy is just a way to get card advantage on turn six, seven, when you're starting to run out of gas or when you need to keep up the pressure on board. So experimental frenzy won't always come down on curb but this at least allows you to no matter what go and get the red source that you need or conversely by the way the black source that you need for chupacabra or doom whisperer in a couple of turns this just allows you to do a lot of stuff and even though i'm not playing a bunch of copies because i think jade light is the much better card in this or many other decks i still think that if we're trying to fill out the creature base a copy of district guide is not just forgivable but probably the right call but we are playing a couple of spells in the deck. Starting with the two copies of Assassin's Trophy, probably expected to see. If it makes you feel any better, this card is dropping. Like every day, it's dropping 25, 50 cents. It's gone down from $30 now to 17, 50. That's much more manageable. And I'm only asking you to get a couple of copies of it. So, you know, it's just the most versatile, flexible removal spell in this or almost any other format in all of Magic at this point. So at least pack a couple of copies of it. Catch all answer to anything. And I like that kind of interaction. But we're also playing three copies of Lava Coil in the deck. This is like the only other red card in the deck. 
it turns out, but I really like this more than a piece like Cast Down. Even though we have fewer red sources than black sources, this gets rid of Rekindling Phoenix forever, and that makes a huge difference in my mind. But to finish off the main, I've snuck in just one copy of Path of Discovery here. I think it's I think it's worth playing, you know, when you do draw it. This can be great, obviously, if you have a Wild Growth Walker in play or something like that. And the mana to burn on it, it's a ridiculously good mana sink. Even if you don't have a Walker in play, it's just a good way to, like, put counters on creatures, get that little bit of inevitability, you know, inevitability if they can't do anything about it, um, or just get through lands, you know, pick up lands that you might need, thin your deck a little bit for when you do start frenzying. So Path of Discovery is just awesome. I think that we need a decent mana sink in the deck, and this is the best one we could play as far as I'm concerned. Now we're playing 24 lands in the deck because we got so many explorers and a district guide and stuff, you know. Um, even though we are three colors and it's a difficult mana base to build right now, I think we can get by on 24. It hasn't been a problem. We've got 16 green sources, 14 black sources, and 10 red sources, which looks a little bit low, but again, all the explorers makes that a little bit easier. That said, I can't wait for pretty much precisely three months from now, actually, at the recording of this video, um, when we get, like, the real Jun mana base, you know, we get Blood Crypts, we get Stomping Grounds, it's gonna be great, but until then, this is a fine mana base for you. Here's the sideboard, and there's a lot you can do in a Jun sideboard right now, but I've actually kept it pretty simple. You know, Duress in there against Control Match, I think that's an easy call to make. Golden Demise against the, you know, low-to-the-ground aggro decks, Mono Red and such, although, by the way, you could play um, the Fiery Cannonade instead, but I think Golden Demise is the better card, especially later on in the game. Thrashing Bronzodon is in there. This is a good catch-all answer to artifacts and enchantments, and a big body, for that matter. Not too hard to cast. And we've got Plague Crafter in there, mostly against, you know, um, control decks. This is great for killing a Teferi, because this often kills a Teferi, unless they've got, like, Essence Scatter, or sometimes Syncopate. Often they have to have Essence Scatter, though. Um, and it's good against Vine Mare and all those other Hexproof creatures I was talking about earlier. So I've really liked Plague Crafter in this format, and so has just about everybody else to date. <laughs> you know, it's not a new thing to say Plague Crafter's good. Eldritch Reborn is also in there, though, to help out against those Hexproof creatures, against those Planeswalkers, and to get us more late-game value out of either graveyard. Great card. Now, Path of Discovery has just been included a second copy, because the card is just more than cute in the main deck, and in those grindy games against Green Black and other mid-range decks in the format, having a Mana Sink like this is actually really, really good when you've got Walkers and stuff out. Now, as far as what I didn't play in this deck, before we get to the power rankings here, there's actually not much, you know, there were some sort of budget concessions, you know. This deck ended up at like $270, which is a lot of money, but the first draft of this deck was like 400 bucks, you know. I was playing a copy of Vraska in the main deck and a copy in the sideboard, two copies of Vivian Reed in the sideboard, a third copy of Assassin's Trophy, a third copy of Doom Whisper. It just gets really expensive really, really quick, but the deck is not just serviceable, but very good in working functional order um, without having to make it a $400 deck, so why even do that? I'm not even sure that you want to play stuff like Relic Seeker or Carnage Tyrant six drops in an Experimental Frenzy deck in the first place. So again, I don't think you have to spend 400 bucks on this deck. Also, like Lana or Elves in the deck, I know you're probably commenting that, and this is the last card I want to talk about in this section. Um, but we only have like eight untapped green sources on turn one, and that might be enough for you to play Lana or Elves. I like 10 to 12 untapped green sources or sources of any color to play a one drop on turn one. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so I didn't end up on Lawn or Elves, but if you could work, you know, more forests into the deck somehow, then I could see this definitely working out to get to your Frenzy a little bit faster. I've already said you don't necessarily have to get to Frenzy super fast, but you could. You could ramp into Jade Light Ranger on turn two. That's obviously a great play. Wayward Sword Tooth. There's some things you could do with Elves, but I don't think it's entirely necessary. I guess the last thing I'll mention, actually, in this section is that there were other ways to build this deck, you know. This deck was base red when I first kind of conceptualized it. A lot of red cards, and then only one or two black cards. You know, I wanted Wayward Sword Tooth, um, well, black and green cards. I wanted Sword Tooth, I wanted Doom Whisper, and kind of added on to that, but it just turned out in the end, it worked better off as a base Golgari deck that just splashed red. The mana base works better for that, and there's plenty of reasons to play black and green cards. But that said, I did run across a sort of build of this deck that I'm going to keep up my sleeve for a little bit later on in the season. It's super budget, it's hilarious, it does ridiculous tricks, and it won't be too long until I cover it because I have to get it out of my brain. 
But anyway, here's your power rankings right here. Final score of 65 points, pretty good in a few categories, although not super lush in things like speed or even offense or defense. We're at least above average in some of those categories. And we have good resiliency for what it's worth, really decent versatility because we have good removal and really good threats in this deck. And if we get into the late game, we can do some really disgusting stuff, not only with Frenzy, but with Wild Growth Walker and all of our other explorers. You know, that's probably the dumbest name for the deck, by the way, is Explorimental Frenzy but that's probably the one we'll go with <laughs> in any case so that's a lot of fun you know obviously the green black explore package has proved its worth and standard at this point and the big point of the deck really is to just play experimental frenzy and keep those explore triggers going as much as you can hilarious yes but totally works so if you're interested in giving this thing a try, just do what you always do. Click the first link in the description box below me down there and go over to TCG Player, view the deck list, pick up any pieces you need or the whole deck if that's what you need. But at this point, you've had time to pick up a couple of Jade Lights, some Secret Squires, a Merfolk Branch Walker, two Wild Growth Walker. So I doubt you even need all the pieces for this deck. Give this thing a try though. It's a fun one. But I'm pretty sure I'm tapped out for this one. So just do all the YouTube stuff. You know, I don't have to tell you by now. Just like, subscribe if you haven't done it yet. It would mean a lot to me. Much more than I let on. So do all that stuff, you know. Um, follow me on Twitter, SBMTG Dev. It's been a while since I even told you I have a Twitter a Twitter account. But there, there it is. Um, but you can also throw a dollar into the Patreon if you're, if you're able to do that. It's just a dollar a month to be able to vote on what decks you want to see next. And you might even get a sneak peek of that stupid budget deck that I was just talking about. So get on there. There's going to be another poll available to vote on um, on Monday afternoon. So get in there, pledge your buck, and I'll see you guys in a couple of days. I <laughs> think Wednesday's my next deck deck. So I'll be back in just a couple of days. Get over to the Patreon, vote on what you want to see next, and I will catch you cats later. I'm Deb from The Place. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Spread love and be kind.